as was given in the problem, the derivative of f times g, the product function f times g, derivative is equal to f prime times g plus f times g prime. So the derivative of x squared plus 3 multiplied by the quantity squared of x minus 4, the derivative of the whole thing, is going to be uh, easily calculated using this rule. We identify the x squared plus 3 as our f function and the square root of x minus 4 as our g function and then we simply apply the rule. And the rule says f prime times g <coughs> that would be x squared plus 3 quantity prime times the square root of x minus 4 plus f times g prime. That would be the f function x squared plus 3 multiplied by the derivative of the g function, square root of x minus 4. So we have the derivative of that function. Now, the derivatives are easy enough to calculate. The derivative of x squared plus 3, well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 3 is 0. So we simply have 2x for this. And then that's multiplied by the square root of x minus 4, of which we don't do anything to. Okay. And then we take the x squared plus 3 and multiply it by what we get when we take the derivative of the square root of x minus 4. The derivative of the square root of x is, well, that's x to the 1 half, so your derivative would be 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1 half, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, which is then uh, 1 half times 1 over the square root of x, and that's 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So the square root of x minus 4 prime becomes 1 over 2 square root of x. And naturally, uh, the derivative of the constant number 4 is 0. Derivative is a rate of change. Constant number is unchanging, so its derivative is 0. Then we simply multiply all this out. Now, we also could have done that, uh, this whole thing, uh, by going ahead and using the distributive law and multiplying all this out. And we would have gotten four terms. And that would have been four power functions. And we would have been able to take the derivative of each separately. And we would have obtained uh, the same result when we, uh, well, we would have had the same result at the end. And you can verify that if you wish. OK? And over here, uh, we take, we, we do the calculation of f prime and g prime in a little more detail. Uh, f prime is x squared plus 3 quantity prime. So it'd be x squared prime plus 3 prime. 3 prime, again, is the derivative of a 3. Derivative of a constant, rate of change of a constant is 0. So that's going to give us 0. And this is just x squared. The rule for taking the derivative of the power function very quickly gives us 2x. Now for g prime, uh, again, the 4 prime is going to be 0. But we're going to have the square root of x prime. And here I actually write it out. That's x to the 1 half prime, which is 1 half x to the 1 half minus 1, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And I kind of skipped a step there because I was out of room. But x to the negative 1 half is 1 over x to the 1 half, which is 1 over the square root of x. When we multiply 1 over 2 by 1 over the square root of x, we get 1 over 2 square root of x. We also do the derivative of uh, the product of these two po polynomials, a binomial, quadratic binomial, or trinomial, I'm sorry, multiplied by the linear binomial. Uh, and I know, uh, you know that we can easily multiply these out. Uh, if we multiply these out, we get 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 6. And you should be easily able to easily verify that, perhaps in your head, uh, but on paper very easily. And then uh, the derivative of that, well, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Multiplying that by 2, we get 6x squared. Derivative of x squared is 2x. When that's multiplied by 3, we get 6. And of course, we have the negative there. The derivative of x, that's x to the 1. It's 1x to the 1 minus 1, 1x one to the 0, which is just 1. And then we just have negative 3 times 1. And the derivative of 6, again, 6 is constant, so its derivative is 0. So this is the result that we're going to get, but we're going to apply the product rule. And really, uh, if you're doing this particular 
uh, expression, it's probably easier to multiply it out and take the derivative one term at a time. Not necessarily so on this one. That's about a, it's about a wash. It's about as easy one way as the other. Okay, well, we apply the product rule. And I hope I didn't say chain rule earlier. That's a different thing. We'll see that uh, in the next class. Um, but the product rule, again, uh, says we take the derivative of the first and multiply it by the second function. And then we take the first and multiply it by the derivative of the second function. Now, again, product of two functions, derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And uh, something's got it messed up here a little bit, so let me write that in a little more clearly. Okay, well, very easy to take these derivatives. Derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. Derivative of 2 is 0. So this gives us this, and we bring this term down here. And then we have this. Now, this that's not a term. It's a factor. I'm using the right word here. Uh, we take this factor, and it's just repeated. We don't do anything to it. But we take the derivative of 2x plus 3. Well, the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 3 is 0. So we just have 2 there. And that equals etc. We multiply all this out, collect all the terms, and it's going to match what we have here. Okay, Easy enough to check out. Uh, we have an x squared times 2, which is 2x squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared, so we get 6x squared. We have a 2x times negative 3, that's negative 6x. And a negative 3x times 2, another negative 6x. Uh, and that gives us, uh oh, something's wrong. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, Negative 6x here. From this one, we get a plus 6x. And here we have a negative 6x. And that gives us our negative 6x. And then we have 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 2 times 2 is 4. Negative 9. And 4 is not negative 3. It's negative 5. Um, something else wrong. Let's see. Negative 9. Uh, that's 2. That's 3. That's 3. Something's wrong there. i got to stop. OK, the problem was over here. Negative 3x times 3 is negative 9x. 2 times 2x is 4x. Negative 9x and 4x is negative 5x. And I have negative 3x here. That should be a negative 5x. That's going to give us a negative 5 here. And now, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. 2 times 2 is 4. They add up to negative 5. And now everything reconciles. This is the same as this.